Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Hot and dry conditions persist. And I've been traveling around the past couple of days, seeing a few friends, uh, farmers, orchards, dead standing trees, no water for the farms. Food production way off. Yeah, I wish I had better news to report, but people that have lived out here their entire lives are reporting to me they've never seen anything like this. Yeah. And the roads, of course, just bone dry. Bone dry, kicking up. You go down these roads and your car is covered with volcanic dust immediately. And everywhere I went, that's all everyone's talking about. And like I've said before, my first many years back in here, uh, I used to wonder if it ever stopped raining. <laughs> I guess there's a glimmer of hope for next week. They're, they're threatening a little disturbance out there in the Pacific that might bring us some moisture. And I mean, we need it because I've been on the road, like I mentioned, a couple of uh, past days and the lines for water and the water trucks backed up at the water stations I've never seen it so busy and here on my main catchment tank I'm down to my last right at about 2,000 gallons and it's going down every day so uh, getting into some real conservation modes here a couple of friends of mine asked, hey, even up at your altitude, uh, how dry is it? And this is normally just lush and green and moist, always, always, always. And I mean, it's just dry and brittle. I don't have the dead standing trees that I saw at those that were much closer to uh, sea level, where it's, you know, a little bit warmer and drier even. But yeah, this is, I've never seen, never seen, that's just dust, just dust. Same thing here. I've never seen this dry out like this again, just, just dust. These are usually mounds of squishy, moist. Even up here, dust. So yeah, a bit concerning. So let's get out of the sun for a minute and see what's new in the shop. So I'll take a quick reading on this. It's been a couple of days uh, where we left off. I did get notice that my JK BMS is at the post office and I'm gonna pick that up tomorrow. But let's see what it reads right now. Okay, here's that first cell, which was absolutely the highest. We did drop the voltage down, 3.3, uh, and they're all 3.3 now, every one of them. And it was these first four, and we're on the third one now, and then the fourth one. Uh, those were all up to uh, uh, four volts at one point. They're all 3.3 now, and then right down the line, 3.3, sixth one, 3.3, seventh one, 3.3, and last in the string here, 3.3, and it's exactly the same on the back. So now the entire thing is uh, every individual cell sitting at 3.3 volts. So I think I'm about ready for that BMS. So I'm still real happy that that never changed, never saw a bounce back after I discharged those cells. Uh, everything's right where we left it. Been a couple more days, looking good. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there real quick. And in the meantime, up on this blue wall, which uh, has this 200 amp hour volt go tied into it for many, many months. Uh, I did notice on the battery, the alarm has been triggered. It's in absorption right now. 
So it made me go back and look at the log to see if I can see what's happening with that. Why is that battery triggering an alarm? And I've only been up here, you know, a few times making videos about that battery that we're working on. Uh, haven't been really using this system at all. It gets up to float every single day. Everything's been working fine when I've been up here running lights and charging things up. Haven't really put any kind of a real load on this system. Yeah, we can see it's at 14.2, which is the target voltage and absorption. It only took 20 watt hours to get it up to this point today. But I did see something in the log that looked a little suspect. So yeah, zero watts coming in. Voltage looks good. Battery voltage looks good right where it should be. And again, uh, thanks to the Victron, here's what was catching my attention. Uh, like this morning, the lowest voltage it caught after sitting overnight, everything turned off, of course, not nothing running. But the day previous, same thing, but there's a 13.1 volt. 13.36, that doesn't really concern me. But why the 13.1s? Really, there's no difference in these nights because, like I said, everything's turned off. I should be seeing this 13, you know, 3, really. There's the 13.2. 13.1, 13.09. Now, these were the days I was up here uh, drawing a little more power, and you can see it took a little bit more watt hours to get things up to to full, but overnight, you know, I was not drawing this kind of power off of here. So, a little puzzling. So now what I've done is I've gone back to the trends for the past two weeks, and here, here it is hanging up there, you know, 13.3. Most mornings is the lowest it records after sitting quietly overnight. But then here, here's a lot of these, you know, 13-ish. Volts. So in the past two weeks, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times, it's dropped down to that like 13.01 roughly. Uh, so why is it doing that? Hmm. And now if we go back and look at 30 days worth, same thing. Yeah. Most of the times it's been hanging in there, you know, really good. Every few days or so it does this. So yeah, again, nothing's been running. It got up to a full charge every day, full absorption float cycle, you know, which is 14.2 is my target. And then I've just got it set at 13.5 for float. So after it hits 14.2, hangs up there for a couple of hours, then, you know, it just shuts the panels off and it just settles down and, and I haven't been using it. But yeah, that's, that's what, got my attention right there. So I, I don't know what that is. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut this system down and turn the battery off. There's an on off button on this particular battery and see if this just doesn't kind of reset. Um, I don't have any other comms connected to it to where I could get anything different off the battery than what the Victron app is showing. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and turn everything off. We'll start with the solar panels. And now let's just turn this battery off. Lights are off, so now the battery's off. What little, well there now, good, the charge controller's off. It did blink just one time, but little extra voltage running around in there, but now that's all off. So I'm just gonna set it, leave it off for a few minutes and see if we can't reset that battery. All right, been a couple of minutes. Let's uh, turn this battery back on and see if it doesn't clear that alarm. Okay, it did. Got power to the charge controller and let's throw the panels back on. Just do a quick look at what's happening. 
opening the panels up, and boom, it goes right to 14 too, because that battery is full. And uh, we'll just kind of let it go through that cycle, see what happens. Everything looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and turn the inverter on here. Everything looks good. Okay, and let's get a little, little light on the situation. Start running a little bit more power, and while I'm up here, I'll just keep using some power. Yeah, I've got inverter running, light on, charging a couple of things, small loads. Holding it right at 14.2. Run light is on on the far right there. So yeah, maybe that's all it needed was just to be turned off and on. I don't know why. We'll see, I'll check on that tomorrow, see what happens, see if I start dropping down that voltage a little bit again overnight. And here's the JK BMS that I got you guys. So if any of you are using this and have set one up, uh, I might be leaning on you guys in the next couple of days. I'll study up the instruction manual uh, very, very closely. But anyway, that's what's, that's what's going to be going in there. And just while I was filming that last clip, I looked over here just to, I mean, this hasn't been turned back on for 10 minutes. Got an alarm again. Let's take a real quick look at it. I'm only gone back 10 minutes because it's happened within 10 minutes. And sure enough, a little drop right there. And that was down. Let's see if I can get that to show up here. How much? So there we were up at 14.2, 14.2, and then, I mean, I turned a few things on, but it looks like 13.5 it fell down to. Try and catch it. Oh, I'm kind of very sensitive. Yeah, 13.5. Shouldn't have gone down to that. Uh, I'm I'm running a oh, just a few watts of power, and it should be all coming in. Holding it at 14.2, yeah. So I got you know 40ish watts coming in off the panels, huh? So although that's the lowest it registered, 13.5. There's there was like a break in some activity right there. As you can see, you know, it's up at 14.2. Yeah, 14.2, which is where it should have been. And then something. Yeah, well, okay. I mean, everything's running up here and looking okay right now, but yeah, something happened there. That must be what triggered that alarm light on the battery. And like I said, I haven't put any kind of a serious load on this thing. Usually, you know, be long before the sun even quits hitting the panels, I'm out of the shop. It's 100% full. I think what I'm going to do today is put a, a good discharge on that battery, draw it down, leave a couple of things on up here at night and uh, see if it kind of doesn't need to be uh, more heavily discharged and then charge back up and see if it won't settle down. I mean, everything's working, but you know, something's acting just a little goofy. But that's the least of the worries <laughs> up here today. Yeah, we need some rain. All right, guys, I'll be tuning back in with you here pretty quick and uh, get that BMS hooked up over there. And uh, boy, that'd be something to get that up and running again, wouldn't it? All right, you guys, I hope the weather's cooperating where you are and you're getting what you need. And I'll catch you real soon. Aloha, everybody. Heading for the shade. <laughs>